it is one of New Zealand's, if not the world's, great train journeys. The iconic Transalpine celebrates 30 years in operation this month, and our very own train enthusiast, I did not know this about him, <laughs> Hamish Dodd, has already ticked a couple of rail journeys off his bucket list, and he's here in the Harbour Normal Lounge to tell us all about them. Good morning, Hamish. Good morning. I mean, who doesn't love a good train ride? I know, but I didn't know you were so into them. Well, yeah. I mean, it's, it's something I kind of grew up with. My uncle used to have a little train set, and we, I used to go and watch them as a little kid, and I guess it flowed on from there. Yeah, to big know? trains. Big to trains. big trains. Uh, so tell me about some of the great journeys of New Zealand that you've done. Okay, um, well, the, the, the best one I have done was uh, the Northern Explorer, so I caught that from Auckland to Wellington, and uh, I did that by myself. <clears throat> yes, it's a bit like going to the movies by yourself, but I did it, and it was well worth it. I needed to get down to Wellington, and I thought, let's do this in a great fashion. So you kick off, of course, leaving from Auckland, I got to see the beautiful fields of the Waikato, so it's yeah. green and lush, and then you get such a, a change in landscape as you move down through National Park and you climb up and you get to see the mountains, if it's not too cloudy, and uh, move your way down to uh, Wellington. It's, it's, fantastic it's a fantastic to way to go. Yeah, what a great rail journey. I love rail trips. Uh, 30 years, though, it's a huge milestone for the Transalpine, so how do you reckon rail services have changed? <laughs> a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I, I think I caught the Silver Fern once, which was the old stainless steel yes. uh, thing to Wellington. Yeah, yeah that was, a, that was a, a journey and a half. <laughs> and I, I caught these really old carriages down to National Park once when we went doing some uh, tramping down there probably don't think I do these things these days. No. They're much more impressive now. Big, big windows, so you really get the vista from inside the train. They've got um, comfy seats. There's a start. Food's improved exponentially, and the coffee's great. Uh, they have open viewing carriages, so you can actually go out. You're sort of covered in over the top, but you can look out through the side. Yeah. Great photos, but you get really good sights and smells, um, which is part of the environment. Also, there's a uh, GPS system which will run automatically and it'll tell you a little bit about what's happening as you go on your trip. Oh, that's a cool thing, so you can see where you are and what's going on. Well, yeah, it tells you a bit about the history and what's happening, what you're looking at. Oh, that's nice. Um, do you plan on taking the Transalpine journey yourself? I certainly do. Yeah? yeah, I've got a bit of a plan going. I thought I'd fly to Christchurch, Transalpine across, grab a rental car, drive up to Nelson where my wife's from and then fly home from there. I, 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 no, I started planning and I think that's about my sort of trip. And who wouldn't anyway, you know? I mean, let's face it, people like John Travolta have taken it. Kate Winslet oh and even the Bart Simpson. He went through um, to look at the Canterbury Donut. Wow. Who knew? My son did, but I didn't. Yeah, who knew? So do you think these train journeys would be suitable for having kids on as well? These are great for kids. I mean, uh, I think the, the key to remember here is they are a journey. They're no longer function. Once on time you caught the train to go A to B yeah. you know um, now it's about actually getting on the train relaxing and enjoying it and you could say oh you could drive it but the reality is um, if you're driving you're not really part of the process so you can catch the train you've got your kids there you can have ice cream on board coffee food you can yeah. have a beer mm -hmm. uh, and you can just sit back and see a, a part of the country that you can't actually always see by the road. Well that's the thing with, with rail lines they access a lot of places that you don't see by the roads. Roads tend to just sort of go straight down the middle. Yeah and it's about the, the, the it's part of the journey so you don't look at it like it's A to B it's about how cool we get to do this and then carry on. You sound like a life coach. It's oh, the journey, not the destination. Well, this is it. I never quite got that until you do a train ride, then you get it. Uh, the Inter-Island of Ferry, it's great to include too in the itinerary. Yeah, I mean, if you can. I mean, once again, it's one of those things. Um, there are many ways to cross uh, Cook Strait, but if you've got a car or you're catching the train through, um, why not take the opportunity? We'll just go in as a passenger. Yeah. Uh, you can go in and there's an upstairs lounge. Our dear barista, Jesse. Hello, Jesse. Uh, he let me know there's a fantastic lounge upstairs, which is a little bit more spacious, a little bit quieter. You pay a little bit more, oh. but it's worth popping up to. But you get to see part of the country, our country, that you don't always get to see. Yeah, and it is a magnificent country, isn't it? It is. Oh, hey, Mitch, that's been enlightening. Pleasure having you on the sofa. So nice, thank you. Yeah, nice to have you here. Sounds like a Kiwi must do.